From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. Seventy-three, fifteen thousand square miles of the Rio Grande border ravaged by murderous bands of renegades striking suddenly out of nowhere, looting, killing, burning everything in their path, then racing back across the border to sanctuary. 1873, the 4th Cavalry troops led by Colonel McKenzie fought an impossible war, never knowing when or where trouble would hit next. Two things stood between them and the murderers, and international law and the Rio Grande. March 17th, another day, another attack. Another ranch looted and burned. An entire family brutally massacred. But this attack carried a new significance. Mackenzie's lead scout, Trooper John Ryan, had been captured by the renegades. Their escape seemed quick and easy. But this time, Mackenzie was close. The ranch was beyond saving. But Trooper Ryan was still alive. Following their usual pattern, the outlaws raced for the river. But they picked a spot where Mackenzie knew they couldn't cross, knew it to be a trick to discourage pursuit. The far side was sheer cliff. They would have to go farther downstream. There was still a chance to save Ryan. Let's try and cut him off. Mackenzie's troops galloped tired horses, too tired to save the seconds needed. And again, Mackenzie was too late. Again, a few feet of shallow brown water served not only as an international boundary, but as a bulletproof barrier that Mackenzie couldn't pierce. Uh, hold your fire. Oh. Mr. Winters, my orders were to halt. Obey them or I shall fire. I'd sure like to follow the lieutenant across that river. Why don't they shoot at us? They want us to watch what they're doing to Ryan. Kill him? Worse. They'll keep him alive. Just barely. Reform ranks, Lieutenant. We're going back to Fort Clark. Ryan's just newly married, sir. I'm aware of that, Lieutenant Winters. You forget I married them myself just two weeks ago. Now, would you be so good as to obey my order? Left by two. No military commander finds it easy to sacrifice even one man. Colonel McKenzie was no exception. He knew what his men must feel as they carried out his orders to abandon Ryan to torture and leave without an attempted rescue. Coming into Fort Clark. I want every man to ride in like the cavalryman who rode out this morning, at a gallop. And one thing more. Trooper Ryan did not fall into the hands of the renegades alive. He was killed instantly and died gallantly. 
Any man who breathes a word to the contrary will have to answer to me personally. All right, Sergeant Lund, give the command. All right, buckles, and I up now. Forward, fall. Dismiss the men, sir. Oh, Lieutenant Winters, we'll have them stand fast. If you expect a compliment on today's action, I'm afraid I have a disappointment for you. Could hardly be called a success from any point of view. Bravery there was, but our movements were imprecise, undisciplined. And precision and discipline are what an army unit fights on, what it survives on. Sergeant Lund? Yes, sir. The men are to have five minutes to change mounts. Then they're to engage in two hours of saber drill. Lieutenant Winters will accompany you. You may dismiss the platoon. Sorry, Mary. Colonel Mackenzie, they, they didn't get him alive, did they? No. He was much too good a soldier to let them get him alive. Thank God for that anyway. You'll need friends now, Mary. I hope you'll consider me one of them. Saber drill in this day and age. Where does he think he is, back of West Point? I thought we were doing pretty good until he stopped us. Yeah. yeah, it's never good enough for the Colonel. That's why you buckos are going to live to be old soldiers in spite of yourselves. Urgent dispatch for Colonel McKenzie. Dispatch, sir. Uh, no answer, that'll be all. You wanted to see me, Lieutenant? I assumed you'd want to see me, sir. Oh, yes. I should reprimand you for your impetuous conduct at the river. Is that all, sir? No. The Secretary of War is inspecting this post. He'll arrive by stagecoach in three hours. Please see to it that a guard of honor is called out to receive it. Yes, sir. Admit, Colonel, that's the worst meal I've had since since we were campaigning at Shiloh. Yes, Mr. Secretary. You always feed this badly? Nearly always, Mr. Secretary. Feed your men this badly? Nearly always, Mr. Secretary. Cut out that, Mr. Secretary. You know my name as well as your own. Yes, Bill. You can't feed soldiers every night on hardtack and bacon? No, Bill. The soldiers had beefsteak tonight. Well, why didn't I have beefsteak? There wasn't enough to go around, sir. I haven't had a nickel from the War Department in over three months. 
Doesn't seem to have slowed you down any. I've never heard so many civilian complaints against one officer in my life. Doesn't this post ever pay bills? Hardly ever, sir. Only when it receives money. You and your territory are getting quite a name for yourselves around Washington. Non-payment of bills is the least of it. How bad trouble am I in, Bill? These devils running back and forth across the border. There's more looting, kidnapping, and murder in this territory. I asked, sir, how bad trouble am I in? You went to West Point just as I did. You know that no military commander in history ever had everything that he wanted. Make do, Mackenzie. Make do! Make do? Just how? Oh, it sounds great up there in Washington, but tell me just how? With that Rio Grande staring me in the face, that Rio Grande that I'm forbidden to cross, and protecting every killer and bandit and cutthroat in the whole territory. An entire family was wiped out today, and their murderers escaped to attack someplace else again tomorrow, because I'm forbidden to cross that river. One of my troopers being tortured to death right at this moment, because I'm forbidden to cross that river. Sure, I'll make do. Tell me just how. Sit down, Mac. That's an order. Mr. Secretary, I, I have no intention. I think you've to... talked enough for the moment, Colonel. Now shut up. Sure, the situation here is impossible. And it's a situation which, under the orders you have, is completely impossible to change. Nevertheless, we want you to change it. We? That president, he and I will be the only two who will ever know your new orders. Well, what are my new orders, sir? Orders? Orders limit a commander, and you're not to have any limitations. They also protect him, and you're not to have any protection. But you are to have orders, verbal secret orders. And here they are, by hook or by crook. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. It'll surprise us if you don't find it necessary to cross the Rio Grande. And it'll surprise us even more if we hear about it when you do it. If the enemy catches you, he'll hang you, and you have every legal right to. We catch you, we'll hang you. We'll court-martial you and drum you out of the service in disgrace for disobeying orders and causing a war with Mexico. Now, sir, if you'll excuse me, I have some pressing duty to attend to. Shaughnessy! Take care of Mr. Secretary Shaughnessy. I have to go out. Can't it wait till morning? Waited too long already, sir. And Bill, I'll make do. The Secretary of War had given Colonel McKenzie secret orders that could shape the destiny of the entire Southwest. To McKenzie, it had a more immediate bearing on the destiny of one man, Trooper John Ryan, if he were still alive. We should have followed Lieutenant Winters across the river today. The old man couldn't have shot us all. The old man's got his reasons, I tell you. He's always got his reasons. Sometimes he's a bit peculiar, I admit, but we're still alive, ain't we? Vincent? As you were, boys. I need five volunteers. The duty will be dangerous and secret. I volunteer, sir. Thank you, Forrest. Any other volunteers? Thank you, men. All right. Tauber, Warren, Sergeant Lund, McGee, and Forrest. That's it. I know you only asked for five men, sir but I'd appreciate it if you took me along. How much do you weigh, Banyan? About 210, sir. Sorry, your request is refused. The men I have chosen will be ready to ride in five minutes. 
You'll carry sabers, no blankets, no bedrolls. Each man will bring a short length of rope and some boot polish. Any questions? As you were, men. Oh. Remember, I said secret. Rope? Boot polish? Lovely night for a ride, sir. Who's the other horse for? Lieutenant Winters. Lieutenant Winters? I didn't give Lieutenant Winters any orders. Well, he said he just wouldn't feel right letting you go off without another officer, sir. Where is he? Here, sir. Reporting for duties. Happy to have you with me, Ben. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Mackenzie's plan was simple and daring. The only question, could it succeed? He knew he must depend entirely on the element of surprise. Sometimes concealed by darkness, sometimes harshly revealed by treacherous moonlight, Mackenzie's raiders pounded through the night. The easiest way was not the shortest. Mackenzie wanted the shortest and the fastest. travel with as little noise as possible. Anything that rattles stays behind. No bridles. Use the length of rope you brought for hackamores. Blacken your faces and your hands with the boot polish. There's moonlight. All right, let's go. Take off them spurs, Tauber. You can hear them a mile. Clark. You can leave that bugle behind. We won't be needing it. Men are all ready, sir. Very good, Lieutenant. Goodbye, darling. Each man knew he might not return, yet each man followed Mackenzie with one thought. Could they reach Ryan before he was tortured to death? When Mackenzie reached the Rio Grande, the river had changed. It was no longer an impossible barrier blocking Mackenzie and shielding the enemy. He had waited a long time for this night, March 17, 1873, when for the first time in history, Mackenzie's raiders crossed the Rio Grande into Mexico. every second that passed reduced his chances of finding Trooper Ryan alive, Mackenzie kept up the grueling pace as he penetrated deeper and deeper into foreign territory. There would be no slowing down until he was within striking distance. little doubt that his attack would hit with surprise, but it would have to be total surprise. The slightest warning would guarantee failure, the loss of life to Ryan and his rescuers. The enemy might be off guard, even careless, but there would surely be sentries. These could spell the difference between possible success and immediate catastrophe. There must be no warning, no call for help, 
No alarm that American troops were on Mexican soil. If you don't hear an owl hoot in three minutes, you may assume that I'm... that I've been unsuccessful. Yes, sir. Then you're to take command. Good luck, sir. The lieutenant shouldn't have let the old man go in there alone. it been now? It's been two minutes and 35 seconds. Maybe the old man ain't so surprised he thinks he is. Maybe he needs help. Suddenly, the fatigue was gone, the need for silence gone. Only the big job was left. The attack hit with savage precision. Mackenzie had picked his men carefully. None faltered. Each had a job to do. Each did it well. Ryan seemed to be alive. At least they hadn't cut him down. Mackenzie's first raid had hit and succeeded. John Ryan had been rescued, and not a single trooper had been lost. Mackenzie had crossed the Rio Grande, wiped out a murderous band of outlaws, and there would be no report, no court-martial. Not this time. men know we may ride together again sometime. Yes, sir. <laughs> Picking men were light so they wouldn't tire the horses. He sure had this one planned out. Your sabers are silent, he says. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sarge, boot polish and rope. That Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> What'd I tell you about the old man? <laughs> Good troops, Colonel. My congratulations. Thank you, sir. By the way, Colonel, I hear that one of your men captured by the renegades made his escape last night. That's right, sir. How'd the raid come off, Mac? You must be mistaken, sir. Wasn't any raid that I know of. Tell me, Colonel, do you regularly wear boot polish at morning review? Not on your boots, Mac. On the back of your neck. <laughs> 